this video, we're going to code out one of the most popular games that came out within the last couple years, and that is the game Wordle. If you go onto the New York Times app or the website, you can play Wordle once a day, and you have to wait 24 hours for the next game to come out. With this, you'll be able to play Wordle and give it to your friends, and you guys can play as many times as you want. So let's go ahead and get started. So for this form, the first thing we're going to do is change the name before we do the size. So that's going to be FRM main, just like we've always done. Now we can go back down to the uh, size. So the size for this form is going to be 400 pixels by 500 uh, pixels. That will give us right about the uh, right amount, almost looking like a cell phone because most people play this on uh, their cell phone. The next thing we want to do is get rid of that text so it doesn't say form one, but it says Wordle. The next thing we got to do is we got to add a label and the label is just going to be for the title. We're going to put Wordle right here at the top. We're going to try to center it uh, the best we can. That's going to be the only thing we put on here Everything else is going to be handled uh, in code. So let's go ahead and put that label on there. So we're going to move this label, you know, close to the center. Uh, we were going to change this to LBL title. There's nothing we're going to do with this uh, inside of our code. So it, it could be left as label one, but we want to follow those uh, professional uh, settings. Uh, let's make the size uh, bigger. So 24. See, so we'll just move it back right about there is uh, close to center. And I want to change that color. I want to make it uh, yellow because I'm going to change uh, the back color because you cannot see that yellow. I'm going to change the back color of this form uh, to black. So let's scroll up to that back color here. And we're going to change it to uh, black so we can see that label. Perfect. The last thing we need to do with this label is change it because we don't want to leave it at label one. We want to put Wordle. So because that's the name of the game and it looks pretty centered uh, right there. With that done, we are ready to go ahead and start coding. We need a list of labels. We need a couple of variables to determine what row and column we're at. We're also going to need a string to hold the word. And then we're going to be introducing what's called a hash set. So let's flip over and go over those right now. So let's go ahead and uh, name that uh, method. So it's going to be public void. It's not returning thing. And we're going to call it generate labels because that's what uh, this uh, method is going to do and we're going to call it. Now there's some uh, variables we're going to need. Uh, the first one is width and we're going to say each label has a width of fi uh, 50 pixels. They also have a height of fix uh, 50 pixels and we're also going to need spacing. Now the spacing is how much pixels or how much space is in between each uh, label. We want to keep it uh, nice and uniformed. We want uh, there are going to be five rows and we want all of them to look uniform. And so that's why we're creating these variables. Also, if we decide we want to make uh, the width or height of our label a little bit bigger uh, because these are the same numbers, uh, maybe I want the width to be larger than the height or the height to be larger uh, than the width. Uh, anything you want to do rather than going through and making sure and hoping you're updating the right 50, you can come back to this variable, update it, and then it'll update it all the way. Now, the one thing I need to center uh, my labels, because I want them centered on the screen, is I need what's called row width. And I need to calculate that uh, so I can center it up. So this is going to be width times uh, five, because there are five labels. And then I'm going to tack on that uh, spacing. Now, when I tack on the spacing, I'm going to multiply it by four. And that's because the spacing, uh, I'm not having space where the first actual label is going. So the first letter of each row, uh, we're not accounting for that spacing. We are accounting for its width, which is why it's times uh, five, because there are five letters in each row. The spacing times four, we want to add uh, the result of this with the spacing times four, so we know what the total row width is, so we can center uh, it up. So again, the width times five is because there are five labels that we're going to have, because there are five letters. Uh, the spacing, we're only multiplying by four, because that first actual label is not going to be, uh, we're not, that doesn't have a space, it has where it's appearing. So what we need now is we need X, and that is where it's going to be, how far left from the screen uh, each label is going to be. So I want it to be uh, 
I want it to be sized or I want it to be centered. So it's going to be this dot client size dot width. Now we're going to minus the row width. And then what we're going to do is we're going to divide by two and that will allow my labels uh, to be centered up. And then Y is going to be uh, 60. And this is how far down you want it to be uh, from the top of the form. I feel like 60 is a pretty good number. Uh, just so you know, I did not magically come up with these. Uh, numbers off the top of my head. It does require a little bit of uh, adjustment and doing a little bit of math. Now, because I've already figured out the math, we have these numbers ready to go. Um, so don't be intimidated when you're programming and you decide, I want to do a different size. I encourage you to do that. And, uh, you know, as you mess with it a little more, it becomes a lot easier to do. And math does go hand in hand with computer programming. So, uh, the next thing we need to do is set up a nested for loop to actually generate these labels. We're going to start with that uh, outer loop. So for INTI equals zero, because we want to start at index zero. That's what I stands for. We want to run this as long as I is less than or equal to four. Another option you can do is I is less than five. You can do either one of those. They will both uh, do the same uh, result. And then inside this outer for loop, I want to make sure I'm inside of it. So I don't want to be outside this bracket down here. I want to be inside this bracket. So I'm inside the for loop. Inside this for loop, I want to have my next for loop. Now I can't use I again. If I try to use I, it's going to say it's already being uh, used. So the common practice is to use the next letter, which is J. We want to run this as long as uh, J is uh, less than or equal to four. And then we're going to increment J just like that. So what we want to do is when this outer loop runs the first time, I will be zero. While I is zero, when it gets to this loop, this loop will run five times. While J is zero, while J is one, J is two, J is three, and then J is four. After that, it will loop back around. I increments and now becomes one. While I is one, this inner loop will run five times because as long as J is less than or equal to four, it's going to run and J is starting again at zero. So J runs zero, one, two, three, and four, which is five times. That's going to create my five labels going across. We're going to write a line of code when we exit this loop to move down on the form. We loop back around. Now I is two. This creates a whole nother set of five labels. So that's why we have a nested uh, for loop here. So each time this runs, we're going to create a label. I'm going to call mine letter and that's just going to be a, a new uh, label. And that is allowing us to create it uh, dynamically. Now we want to give it uh, some text. Now I'm going to start mine with uh, almost, a, well, an empty uh, string. The next thing we're going to do is we want to give it a font. So label letter dot font. Now, for this, you can choose uh, any font you want. So I'm a Rockwell uh, fan. I like Rockwell a lot. That put a comma. The next thing you need to do is choose the size. I want it to be 24 because I want it to fill uh, most of that. And then I definitely want it in a uh, bold. So it's a lot easier for the user uh, to read. So I'm going to do label letter dot size. The next thing I need to do is give it a size. I'm not talking about the font size. I am talking about the size of the label. So that's going to mean new size and it is width followed by height. And remember, I have those variables. So now if I want to rechange the size rather than going in here and changing those numbers, I can just go up here, change it one time and it'll change it for all my labels. The next thing I want to do is I want to do the text align because when I'm playing Wordle, the letters aren't to the left of the label. They aren't to the right. They're smack dab in the center. So we do content alignment dot and that is going to be middle center and that will align it right along the middle of the label to make sure it's easy for the user to see. We definitely want to give it a border style. And that border style, we want to give it a fixed single. That way the label is outlined. It will make uh, it a lot easier for the user to see uh, what is happening. So we definitely want to give it a border. And we want to change that back color. The back color, I want to do uh, gray. So you can do uh, any color you want, but I feel like gray will complement uh, black very nicely. The next thing I need to do is I actually need 
actually need to put it onto the screen. So that's gonna be our location. Now, for the X and Y, the Y will be easy. For the X, we gotta do a little bit of math here. Now, I've already done the math and worked it out. That way it aligns it. When we're talking about the X coordinate, we're talking how far from the left side or edge of the form do we want it uh, to be? Now we have spacing, which will all uh, work out uh, and separate them, but we're gonna do X. Now, that's gonna be where we are, plus J. That is going to be how it actually doesn't end up on top of the other label, but then what I wanna do is I wanna do width plus the spacing. So when I do that, it will all be using that mathematical formula. It'll be equal spacing every single time. And then I wanted to go on the Y coordinate, which is from the top of the screen. Now that we have that, the last couple of things I need to do is I need to add this to my form and then I need to add it to my list of labels. So we do this, let me move it over. I wanna keep my code looking nice, neat and organized. This dot controls dot add, what are we adding? We're adding label letter. That is what we are adding here and I need to add it to my list of labels, which is letter label dot add. What am I adding to that list? The label I just created, which is label letter. There we go. Now the next thing I need to do is right outside this inner loop. Let me get rid of uh, this extra space here. I don't need to get rid of it, but it'll make my code easier to read in case we need to go back and fix something later. So right here, I'm gonna increment the value of Y. And this means after we create a row right here of five labels, I'm gonna increment the Y value, which is gonna bring the next set of five labels that it creates. It's gonna bring it down a little bit. All we have to do now is uh, call this. So the method is called generate labels. So right here after initialize component, we're simply gonna type in generate labels and that method will run. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna save, let's run it and make sure we have five or uh, five labels per row, total of five rows, a total of 25 uh, labels. And you can see right here, that's exactly what we have. We have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five labels. So the user is gonna get uh, five uh, guesses. What we need to do next is we need to actually create a key press event for the form so they can type in right on the keyboard and have it populate each of these labels. Now, anytime you're doing something with a uh, form, um, you want to use private. So we're gonna do private void. We're gonna do form main underscore key press. And we need to remember uh, this because we're gonna need to set this up uh, and after we uh, finish it. Object sender key press events uh, args e. So that's gonna handle the actual uh, press of a key. So we have string guess, and we're gonna use a method that will build uh, the guess, and then we need a letter. There we go, we can put a space in this letter uh, because we can't have it empty. There we go, so that's gonna run every time that we push a key. Now, when we enter any letter, we gotta check and make sure, or not any letter, any character, we wanna make sure it's actually a letter. They can enter a letter, they can hit the backspace key, which will get rid of an existing letter, or they can hit the inner key, which will be submitting their answer. So the first thing we need to do is we need to check if it's a letter. So we do char is letter. Is what a letter? E dot key character. So what that means is when they push a character, it's gonna check to see if it's a letter. If what is a letter? The character that they pushed, which is sent, by the parameter E. So when you're looking at that, that's what that uh, is doing. Now, if it is, what we need to do is, we need to make sure they're not at the end of the row, because if they're at the end of the row, it shouldn't go on to the next row. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna do an if statement inside this if statement. If the current column we are at, which when this runs the first time will be zero, if that is less than the current row, plus one times five, because there are five uh, letters, then what we wanna do is, if that is true, and that is the case, then what we can do is we can go ahead, we can take that letter, we're gonna need to convert it to uppercase, then what we need to do is actually display it and then increment the column so we can move to the next 
letter. So we're going to do letter equals char dot to upper. What are we converting? E dot key char, which is the key character that was just entered. That's what we're converting to an uppercase letter. Remember, we converted all the words in our word list to uppercase letters. So if we don't match, it's going to say that one, it's not a valid word or two, that it didn't get it correct. So we want to make sure we do that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to do later letter label. This is my list of labels. And we're going to do the current column we're at, which could be zero, one, two, three, or four text equals. Well, that's going to be letter. And then you'll notice the red line and that's because it's a char. So we could just two string here and that will get rid of that red line. And then we want to increment the current column by one. This way it goes to the next column to the right. So if we're on the first letter, once we hit a key, it'll show us that first letter, then it moves to the next column over so we can input our second letter. That is one of the possibilities. So we're going to start off with that else if or continue with that else if, and we're going to see if the key they entered is equal to and that is going to be keys.enter. If they did that, then there's several things uh, that need to happen. The first thing we need to do is build the word from our list of labels. That's the first thing we need to do. Then what we need to do, check if it is a valid word, because maybe it's not a valid word. If it is a valid word, then what we need to do is we need to check for the win. If they didn't check for the win, if they didn't win, then we need to check to see if guesses is equal to six. If it is, that's a problem because that means the game is over. Then what we need to do is if it is uh, valid, then what we want to do is we need to update the labels uh, with background color because green, if they if it's in the right spot and it's correct, yellow, if it's part of the word, but in the wrong spot. So we have to update those labels. And then after we update the labels, uh, we need to actually uh, check uh, for the win. So we want to check for the win after we update the labels because we don't want it to be gray and say they won because that's not how our Wordle works. So we want to make sure all this is in the uh, right ants or in the right order and then um, message box for not a valid word. So now that we know what we're doing, uh, we need to create these uh, methods. Uh, having methods for almost all of these will make our code much more organized and easier uh, to handle. So the first one is going to be public. It's not going to be void. It's going to be string because what we're returning is the actual word that we're going to build from the list of labels. So we call it uh, build word. You'll see that it has a red line, just put return, and then for right now, return a simple value and uh, you're good to go. So we'll need to uh, build that. We're gonna call all these and then we're gonna walk through and build each of these. The next thing we need to do is public void because this next one called update labels, all this is gonna do is update the uh, background. It is gonna accept a uh, parameter string temp guess. So that's going to be our parameter uh, name. So we're going to have update labels. It's not going to return uh, anything uh, at all. The next one we need to do is we need to check for a win. So we're going to do public. Now this is going to be a Boolean that's returning and we're checking for a win, which is either going to be true or false. And we're going to pass down and I'm going to call it the same one temp guess because we're going to pass down that guess and we're going to check and we'll just put in a dummy value, return false, and then just to get rid of that uh, red line. The last thing what we need is we need uh, to check if the word is valid. So we're going to do public. And we're simply going to check to see if it's valid. We don't need to really, I don't want to do check word because then it sounds like we're checking the word to see if they won. And um, this is, we're going to do temp guess, and we're just going to determine is it valid or not? So we're going to return false. Those are the methods uh, we're going to need. I think we're all of them. Now we're ready to go in and start building the rest of this else if statement, calling these methods. 
To make this a little easier un to understand, I went ahead and coded it out. Now let's break it down and talk about what each part's doing. So we want to build the word from our list of labels. Guess, which is a variable we declared at the very beginning of this key press method. What are we loading into that? Well, we're going to call the build word method, which is actually going to build the word and store it in the guess. The next thing we need to do is make sure the word they entered is actually a valid word. So we call our check valid method and we uh, check for uh, the guess. If it is valid and that returns true, we're gonna increment guesses. We need to keep track of that because remember once it equals six, the game is over. If it's less than six, not a problem. Then we need to update that. Once we take have the word and we've incremented guesses and we know that it's a valid word, the next thing we need to do is update the background of each letter, either leave it at gray if, it, if it's not in the word at all, leave it at green if it matches and it's in the right spot, yellow if it's part of the word but not in the correct spot. If Once we update the labels, then we want to check for the win. And if check win guess comes back true, we're going to say you win, we're going to exit the program, return to prevent all other code from running while it's in the process of exiting. If the guess is equal six, you ran out of guesses, the word was, we're going to let them know what the word was because they are going to want to see how close they were or how far off they were. We're exiting the program, return again to prevent all that code from running. If it is a valid word, then what we need to do is move to the next row and we're going to do current column equals current row times five. So on the very first row, that's row zero. If I want to get to row one, I'm going to take my, uh, I'm going to increment current row from zero to one. One times five is five and that's going to be the column that I'm on, which is the first column in the second row. And we'll be using current row in our uh, one of our other methods. Now this else statement is not inside, checking to see if it's a valid word. Uh, we're checking if it's not valid, if that doesn't return true, we're simply going to put out a message box saying not a valid word. What we need to do next is we need to update this build word method and then we'll update the rest of them. So inside my build uh, word method, I'm going to create a string. I'm going to call it built word. And then all we're going to do is run a for loop. Now, most of the time it's for INTI equals zero, but that's not where I want to start. I want to start at the first uh, column of the row. So I'm going to do uh, cur row times five. If I'm on the first, uh, if I'm on row zero, zero times five is zero. So I want to start at label zero. But if I'm on the second row, which is row one, one times five is five. That's going to be the fifth index that I'm checking. Because remember, the first letter on the second row is index five. If I'm on the third row, which is row two, two times five is ten. That's the first letter of the third row and so on. So that will always make sure I start at the correct label. I don't want to start at label zero. That's always going to be the first letter in the first row. And I want this to run as long as I is less than the current row I'm on plus one and make sure I'm not at the end of that. And I'm going to multiply that by five. I want to make sure that I am uh, before the end of it or the first letter of the next row uh, actually. What we're going to do is we're going to do built word plus equals plus equals what? Well, that's the letter label. And now that I got I set up correctly, I can just simply put in I and then outside that for loop return built word. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up to this uh, method where we have building the word and I have the built word is guess. So we want to make sure that that's going to work. What we need to also do is go back all the way up here where we did generate labels. We need to actually implement that key press event. So we're going to do this dot key press. What are we adding to that? Well, that's going to be form main underscore key press. So that is what we called it. Then what we need to do is set the key preview equal to true, which will now allow us to handle input. So let's go ahead and let's run this program. Now it's not going to check if it's a valid word because we don't have anything in that method. And uh, I'm hitting more keys. It's not going on to the next row. I need to make sure the backspace key works. It does. Perfect. So if I type in the word keeps, which is different from stare, we want to make sure it has keeps and not what was left over from the previous word. And you can see it's keeps, not a valid word. If I do uh, stare again, 
we can see it's updating every time just like it's supposed to, but it's saying it's not a valid word. That's because our method right now that checks to see if it's valid is returning false. Let's update that method so we can find out if the words are actually valid or not. All right, so in our check valid, we're simply gonna do if word list dot contains, if it contains what? Temp guess, and it will run that hashing algorithm that we talked about er earlier, if it does, we're gonna return true. And then if it doesn't return true, then we're gonna return uh, false. Now, word list. We actually have to build that word list by opening uh, those files. So let's take a look and let's build that method so we can actually load all the words, the Wordle words, and also the uh, words that are acceptable, load those into our word list. Because we're gonna be reading from a file, we will, we're also gonna be using the system.io, which stands for input output. Now we'll be able to read from a file. Now mine, I'm gonna put right here under for main load. It doesn't matter where it goes because it's only gonna run when we actually call it. So this is gonna be public void. It's not returning anything. All it's gonna do are load the words from uh, the file. Now, anytime you're reading or writing uh, to a file, you want to use what's known as a try catch statement. So let's create some variables and then we'll go over how that uh, try catch statement uh, works. So I want to create a string called temp word because I'm going to need to temporarily get that temporarily get that word just for a moment. I'm going to need a random uh, a random method that allows me to generate a random number so I can select one from uh, the actual word list. So here's what we're gonna do, we're gonna try. Try what? Well, the first thing you wanna do is make sure you have your open and curly brace. You can ignore that red line. That red line just uh, says that because we don't have a catch statement. Once we get a catch statement, it will go away. So I'm gonna create a, a string array and I'm gonna call it all words and I'm gonna do file.read all lines because I need to read all the lines from what file word select dot txt so that is the name of my file that is where all the wordle words are stored so then once I get all that then I'm going to do for each I'm going to create a string called temp in all words which is the array and what I'm going to do is iterate through each of these now I'm going to do some things the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do temp word equals temp dot trim. What does that do? If there's any white space in the word by mistake, for example, if the word is food and it's F-O-O-D with a space at the end, the computer's not gonna know that. By using temp dot trim, if the file contains any spaces on the end of the word, that's okay, it's gonna trim it and actually cut it off. So dot trim removes any uh, white space. Then what I wanna do is I wanna move this uh, to the right spot. So then I'm gonna convert it to uppercase because remember, our words are all in uppercase. So I'm gonna do temp word equals temp word dot two upper invariant. That is in case you're in a different culture uh, using a different keyboard, um, you're, it will match and do the same thing that mine does. If you're using uh, the same standard keyboard, uh, English keyboard, then uh, you don't. You can use that to upper, it's up to you. And then what we need to do is we're gonna do word list add, and we are adding temp word. Is it been uppercase, we've removed all white space, and uh, all we need to do is add, oh, capital W there. There we go, all right, we're gonna go outside this try statement here because this curly brace, that's the end of our try statement. So right here, we start our catch. Now what catch will do if this uh, code fails, if it tries to open this file and this file does not exist, our program will crash. The catch statement will allow us to catch it, prevent it from crashing and do something. So we're gonna do IO exception EX. That is uh, what is uh, common uh, to use here. And that's gonna be, we're gonna need a curly brace there. Okay, because we gotta close out the method. We only had one curly brace, which is closing our catch statement, but we need to close out the method too. So all we're gonna do is if it cannot load that file, we're gonna say problem with the Wordle file, word select 
Dot.txt because I'm going to need another try catch statement because what this one is going to do is right after it runs this, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select my word. So my element is going to be equal to rnd num dot next. And I want to do that between index zero and word list dot count. I don't know how many uh, words are in there. I know it's 2000 something, but I can simply do wordlist.count and it'll count all the words that are currently inside the word list. If you would like to update the word select file by adding some of your own custom words, you can, and wordlist.count will be able to account for all of that. So once we have our element, we need to load the word from our wordlist.element at element. So that will allow us uh, to do it. And it says uh, ECS uh, Wordle. That is not what we want. We want our word equal. It's because of this curly brace here. Let me move this curly brace to the next line. Let's try this again. All right. There we go. Word equals uh, the random element that we uh, have from our word list. The next thing we need to do is go ahead and load all the words, add those to the word list so we can check to make sure the five letter word they equal or that they enter is valid. So I'm gonna do another try statement. I'm doing another file, so I definitely wanna do a try string and I'm gonna do all words again. It's okay that I'm using the same thing because I've already added those other words to my uh, list of uh, words. So this file is called validword.txt. So I want to load that file and then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do another another for each loop and inside that for each loop I'm going to do this exact same thing. String temp in all words. I'm going to iterate through that. I'm going to trim the space. So temp word equals temp.trim because I want to trim any white space that's inside this file. I need to convert it to capital. So I'm gonna do the same thing there and then temp, or I'm gonna add it to my word list. So word list.add, what am I adding? I'm adding that temp word. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to do the catch statement because we still have that red line. So I'm gonna do catch. The same thing, exe exception. I'm gonna put in my closed curly brace to get rid of that other red line because it's not creating for it it for me automatically for whatever reason. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to do message box dot show uh, error loading all valid words. That way I know if I'm getting an error, I know which one uh, it is. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to go back up here where we get the word and we're temporarily going to put in a message box and we're going to say the word is because when we test it, uh, yeah, we want to play uh, Wordle, sure, but we want to test it, and uh, rather than losing uh, repeatedly, uh, we want to make sure we're getting the right word or that we don't type it in uh, you know, prematurely if we're checking for the errors. Now that we have that, we can resume back where our other methods are right after we call load words. So right up here, I'll do it before my key press event, load words. So now it will actually load the word and when we type it in, it should tell us whether or not it's valid. Update labels is a big, big part of our code and we want to make sure uh, that we're actually updating, changing it to green and or the background of the labels, green and yellow when appropriate. The first thing we're going to need is we need to know what our start index is. It's not always going to be zero. We're going to do something uh, here mathematically so it always starts at the right place. We're going to create a Boolean array called match index. And what that is going to do is it's going to allow us, I'm going to create a new Boolean uh, every time we come in here uh, to this method because they're going to be set as false. But what we want to do is are we currently matching the index? And we're going to use that for the second pass of the word. What we also need is matched in guess. Was it matched inside the guess word? If it was, then we need to set that to true. Then the last Boolean value uh, we need is matched, not just in the guess, but in the word. This will allow us to uh, prevent problems from when it's not matching uh, and it's in a different spot. 
getting it uh, to yellow. Uh, this one took a little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, working out to uh, get it to work uh, the way I wanted it to. Now let's update that start index. So that start index is going to be equal to whatever row we're on times five. So again, if we're on the very first row, that is row zero. Zero times five means we want to start at uh, index zero, which is the first label. If I'm on row one, which is actually the second row, one times five is five. That means we're gonna be starting at the fifth index, which is the first column in the second row. So that's why we have all that. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through uh, the word the first time, and we're simply gonna check to see if the letter we're on matches the letter in the word. So we're gonna do four, int i equals zero, this time I'll do i is less than five. And then what we're gonna do is i plus plus, and this is just a normal standard for loop. Not a, a lot going on here. We're just simply doing attempt guess i is equal to the word i, which is gonna be the uh, substring. So we're comparing uh, the letters. That's what we're doing here. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna change that index that we're currently at, which is gonna be start index plus i, not one, but plus i dot back color equals color dot green. So that's what we're going to do uh, there. Then all we're gonna do inside this if statement as well is we're gonna set all three of those Boolean values to true. So we're gonna do match index i equals true, matched in guess i equals true and then matched in word i uh, equals true as well so just like that we're missing one i think it deleted one that's okay we'll just type it again matched in word i equals true there we go all right so that's going to be it for the uh, first one now for the second pass we actually need to run a, a nested for loop because if it doesn't match then we want to change that background color to yellow. So let's go ahead and go over the second pass right now. Now what we want to do is traverse through the word again, and this time compare it to every other uh, letter inside where there currently isn't a match. So we're going to do another for loop. For int i equals zero. i is less than five because there's only uh, five uh, letters. i plus plus. All right, we're gonna have a couple curly braces off that we need to uh, fix. There we go. Okay, so inside this for loop, the only way we need to compare the letter that we're on to every other letter in the word that was selected from uh, with our guess is only if there currently isn't a match. And that's why we had match index. So if not match index, if we don't have that, then what we need to do is we need to run a for loop that will compare the letter we're on to all the letters inside the second word. So we're going to do for intj equals zero, j is less than five, and then j plus plus. Now inside this for loop, this is where the conditions uh, that I uh, made that will turn it yellow. So if temp guess the letter we're on, i, is equal and we're checking the first letter with the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth letter. The second letter of our guess with all the letters in the word, our third letter from our guess with all the letters in the word, because if it is equal somewhere in there, which is why we have word J, so that's why we have this loop. So when I runs the first time, it's gonna be zero. It's gonna check word uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five. So somewhere if it's equal and we don't have a match in the word yet, so matched in word. Now that matched in word here is index J, and there is no match inside our guess. That's going to be I. So what that will do is check to see, have we already uh, found a guess there? If not, we need to change it to yellow. So we're going to do la letter label. Now. When we do letter label, we need to do the start index plus one, because what if our start index is 
zero. Well, then that means we want the letter label start index zero. And it's not uh, plus one, it's plus I, I'm sorry, plus I, because I could be zero and zero plus zero is um, zero. So we're gonna do that dot back color equals color. And we're gonna change that to yellow. So let me go over this label start index again. If my start index is zero and I do I, zero plus zero, dot back color, that would be letter label zero. But what if later on I'm in the second row, which is index five? Well, five plus zero is five, so that's gonna change that. So this right here, start index plus I, allows me to shorten a lot of my code, and I need to put I here. All right, there we go. So now all I need to do is I need to do matched in guess, and the match in guess is tied to I equals true, and then the matched in word, that is gonna be uh, J equals true. Now, once uh, I go through there and I find it and I found the match, what I'm gonna do is I can exit out the loop. I don't need to keep running. I can go ahead and break and exit that loop early. Now, everything should show up in yellow. So what we're gonna do is when uh, the yellow is rules or conditions are met. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna run our program, test it, and make sure it works. All right, getting close to the end, we can see the word is snoop. So if I do slope, we know there's an O that's in the right place. So that should be a green. S should also be green. Uh, there is a P at the end of a snoop. So that should be yellow. So we see the built word is slope. It's a valid word and it is working perfectly. Now, what we need to do is try to come up with another word. So let's do pairs. So we know slope has a P. It doesn't have uh, an A, an I, an R. It does have an S. So now the P and the S should show up yellow. And it does, perfect. So it does look like it's working. Let's try this, let's do, um, hmm, let's do, uh, sleds. You can see that the S is in the right place, but this one is not showing up yellow and that is perfect. If it showed up yellow, that would mean there would be another uh, S somewhere. We do slope and, uh, hmm. Oh, that's not the word. Oh, the word was snoop. I was trying to think of what the word is. This should be all green and it is uh, perfect. It says you ran out of guesses. The word was snoop. And that's because we need to update our check win. And uh, right now our check win doesn't do anything. So that's the next method we're gonna update. And then we should be close to being done if not done completely. All we need to do now is we need to check to see if the word that was selected by the computer, by that random number generator, all we need to do is see if it's equal to temp guess. If it is, we're gonna return true. And then if that condition isn't met, we're going to return false. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna run our uh, program again and make sure it's all working. And uh, I'm gonna input a word like uh, grass that has two double S's. We're gonna make sure we put those in the wrong spot. Make sure both of them or only one of them uh, turn up yellow when that condition is met. So what I've done here is I've gone back up and where we had word equals word list dot element at element, I assigned grass equal to the word. So it should say the word is grass. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so the word is grass, perfect. So if I type in sassy, there are three S's. Let's talk about what our code should do. And this is why it's so important you understand your code. The first time it goes through, it compares, and I'm talking about in the update labels code that we uh, wrote not too long ago, the S. It compares the S with the G. Doesn't match, nothing happens. It compares the A with the R, nothing happens. The S with the A, nothing happens. The S with the S. That matches and it's in the right spot. Because it matches and it's in the right spot, we match that index. We have a match in our guess and we have a match in the word. We set those to true. We change this background color to green. Then we see if the Y equals the S, it doesn't. Then we have another uh, if statement or we run the for loop again and we only need to do it for where there is currently not a match in the index. So S doesn't have a match in the index just yet. So it compares it with the G, compares it with the R, compares it with the A, 
compares it with the S. It says, yes, it is in there. So now we do have a match in the guess. We have a match in the word. So that is set to true. This becomes yellow. We compare the A with the G, the R, the A. We find it. It's in there. So we change it to yellow. This S, and this is why we have those Boolean values, match in word and match in guess. It accounts for the word and the guess. It's already been matched. This should not turn yellow. If we have a yellow S here, a yellow S here, and a green S here, that means there's three S's in the word. Well, we know grass doesn't contain three S's. So if our code works, this S should turn green, this S should turn yellow, this A should turn yellow, and this third S, nothing should happen to it. Because remember, it runs through each letter, changing the background color to green if it matches, then it starts over and runs through each letter again to see if it appears in the word. That's why this S will turn yellow and this one should not. I hit the enter key, the word, it, built word is sassy and it works as intended. If I do class, C and L aren't in there, but we can see the uh, ASS in class is. If I do um, swish, we can see the S is in the right spot. This one isn't. If I do grass, it says you win. So what we're going to do now is we're going to comment out the word grass. I'm going to allow the random word. I'm going to take this message box away, showing the user what the word is. Then I'm going to scroll down where it shows the built word. I'm going to comment that out. We're going to save and we're going to go ahead and run our program and we're going to test it out for real. All right, uh, running the game, you can see the uh, we have the message box coded out, so I do not know what the word is. So I'll start with stare. Okay, so we have a S. Let's see here. Let's try lots of, uh, let's see here. I was going to say speed, but there's no E's in there. Uh, hmm, spire, but there's no R-E. Hmm. Maybe uh, spoke. I know there's no E. Okay, so we have SPO. That's good. What would that be? Could that be uh, spore maybe? No, because there's no E. Let's see here. Spool. Mm, maybe it's spool. S-P-O-O-L. Nope. It's got to be spoon. No, it's not spoon. Oh, boy. Uh, let's see here. S-P-O-O. -O. So that could be a spoon. Just going through each letter. Spoof. Mm, could be H I J K L. We did spool. Nope. O P Q. Just want to make sure I'm not missing one because I'm going to have to choose between two. I think we're good. So I think it is going to be spoof. And we won. So that was close. The last thing I want to do is I want to uh, do that again. And I want to make sure that when we get to the end, that it will um, say I lose. Uh, now, what's here? What's very important, when I type all those keys, until I hit enter, uh, it will not move to the next line. It will also not take those extra keystrokes I did and tack that onto the word, which is very important. Because if I type too fast and the user accidentally adds an extra letter, we want to make sure that's not built onto the word. So we're going to do spoof one more time and it should say we lose. The word was Vogue. Hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please take a moment to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to help the channel grow. And we'll see you guys in the next programming video.